Hi, I'm Susan and I am turning 34 this week and I hate getting a year older so I've decided to have Botox mainly, mainly because I really don't like all the lines that have been developing around my eyes and I think in this day and age when we can look a lot younger and have the possibility of getting things like Botox we might as well jump in and do it. I'm originally from New Zealand so I've spent quite a number of years in the sun and I know this has certainly not helped the fine lines around my eyes. I also don't like now when I have photos and I'm smiling I can see all the wrinkles and, the, and um, lines when I frown as well. So that's why I'm here today and I'm really excited. Susan, hello. <laughs> so let's analyse your face Susan. Obviously when I look at you for the first time and you never had any treatment before. So what comes first obviously is your front lines. You have a lot of expression, you know, kind of a hyper expressive, obviously for quite a long time because you're very young. So it's all about the frowning, the forehead lines, cross feet. In the aging process of your face, all you have hyper expressive muscles, so they create lines, which is the case for you. Or you start losing volume and you better restore this volume. Okay? Or sometimes you have problems with your skin, but your skin looks very good. You have very good skin. Okay? If you have enough skin, it's fine. Great skin, slightly dry, slightly dry. Maybe you don't drink enough water. So you need to use rich moisturizers. Yeah. Okay? Good serum, rich moisturizers, oily serum. So just to moisturize properly. Huh? That's quite important. But your skin is really good. You can see the firmness, the elasticity is really good. There's no problem. You have no problem. Because you have three layers. Okay? You need to assess the three layers. You need to assess the skin the padding, the volume, and the muscle, okay? Skin's fine, just need the basic maintenance. You've lost a bit of volume, we need to restore that. And your muscle are try hyper-expressive, so we need to relax your muscle, okay? And then you'll be perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna assess the different muscles of your forehead and mark out some dots, right? So can you frown for me? Yes. This is the frowning muscle, which we call corrugated muscles. They're quite strong and short for you, okay? Now can you raise, you see? Now let's see some few lines. So because it's your first Botox, and we don't really know exactly how your muscle is gonna react. So less is more, first, okay? Rule number one, less is more. We're gonna take a security margin, which means we're gonna do our dots on the forehead slightly higher than normal. We should be tempted to do a bit lower, but we never know, some people might have funny reaction and you can have this side effect called the droopy eyelid. Okay, so we have to be very careful. So I'm gonna do my dots slightly higher than normal and usually for the first time, we advise patients that they may need uh, a touch up a week after, okay? That's fine, that's normal if you have a touch up because you never know, because sometimes the left side is stronger than the right side, so your muscle can be slightly imbalanced. We're gonna put the same dose, okay? But we don't know, so it's normal if you just, you wait one week for the Botox to kick in and settle properly and then you can just pop in and we do some adjustment. Squint your eyes. So this is the cross fit muscle, quite strong, but that you're gonna have very good results, okay? You're gonna feel all relaxed. Voila, that's fine. Okay, so classic Botox, security margin, okay? Okay. So I think it's fine now. So now I think you should lie down. There is Different types of uh, botulinum toxin, they come under different commercial brand name. One famous one is called Botox, like everybody knows. And the other one is called Disport, Disport. And Disport come in a new cosmetic version called Azalea. That's the one I'm going to use today. It's quite a concentrated, concentrated version of Botox. It takes five days to kick in and usually it lasts five months. So this is the first Botox today. I'm gonna do not too strong. It's fine. It's not painful for you. And That's fine. I do quite. Now we are going to do the forehead. Botox is going to relax your muscle. You don't want Botox to really freeze your muscle or paralyze your muscle. That is all the art of Botox, which is in turn depends on the dilution you are going to use and how many dots you're going to do it. And you want to spread your Botox quite evenly on the forehead. 
okay, not to make it too stiff on certain area and let it loose on the other ones, is keep in mind that muscles on your face works in synchronized patterns. So it's difficult if you do just the frowning and if you leave the forehead muscle, you're gonna desynchronize the expression. So it's better to do it everywhere, softly and gently, that to keep this synchronization between all the muscles. And as I say, you can, it's not, yes, of course you can paralyze, but it's like a, the light. You can switch on, switch off the light, but you can use it also a dimmer. That's what I try to do most of the time. So, you, because it's quite complicated for people. People, they, they do Botox, they don't want to see any lines on their forehead. People are asking, for, they all say, I want to look natural, but in the same time, they, they all ask for a frozen Botox, okay? Because if they see one or two lines, they just come back for a top up and say, oh, it doesn't work. So it's very difficult to make them understand that they can look natural. The idea is not to be completely frozen. The idea is to relax the muscle. Why? Because they can have expression, they can have relaxed muscle, and they won't print the lines. Okay, like me, you see, I didn't print the line, that's why I explained you, but you see, I can move a lot. But all along these 15 years, I've relaxed enough my muscle to be, to still keep some expression and not printing my skin. But people don't understand that. You see, they want, I paid for it, I don't want to move. Okay, that's fine. So they, will come back. Even they say, oh, it's natural. It's very difficult. So you see, you don't really see lines on my forehead. Okay, that I can frown. So because the idea is, they don't understand there is conscious frowning and subconscious frowning. Okay, what you want to stop is the subconscious frowning, the one you do without thinking while you sleep at night. Because people think they don't, they sleep like angels, you know, they sleep like all soft and nice. It's not the case. Okay, some people can be really frowny when they sleep. And what you want to keep is the from the conscious for me, because sometimes you want to show your children someone you're pleased or should be careful or whatever you cross. But how many times a day you do this conscious for me? I mean, like three, four times maximum. That will not print lines. But if you stay permanently, like eight hours at night sleeping, having this expression, that you're going to print lines. That's going to happen to this lovely lady, obviously. She must front seriously at night. Maybe she's anxious. Maybe she's worried. I don't know. Or I think it's all day at work. Or maybe at work or in front of the computer, sometimes they're in front of the computer frowning all day long. That's the, the subconscious the frowning. Long. They don't think about it, they do it, okay? This one is a killing one. This one is the aging mechanical expression, um, okay? But if you want to smile consciously, frown consciously, that's not going to harm your skin, you know, because you're going to do it like five times a day. So people still don't understand the difference between subconscious and conscious frowning. You should be able to have some conscious frowning and not be able to do the unconscious one. But that means if you do the conscious one, you will have few lines. But they don't want to accept that. And as I say, I quite like sometimes to do a, a touch-up if necessary, especially when I'm not 100% sure about the shape. Some forehead are much easier and some muscles are more stronger than others. Sometimes the muscles are a bit loose, you know, so you have to be careful because you can, sometimes you can have side effects, you know, quite a predictable side effect. They don't really last very long, but it's not what you want, you know. So how much is it going to cost your Botox now, okay? So when we do the upper phase, which is frowning forehead and cross feet, usually we charge 400 pounds, okay? If we do, I like to complete this. For me, this is even more important as a prevention to do Botox on the lower face. So usually I do here on the corner of your mouth here to prevent the jaws in the muscle called DAO, depressor angularis, you know, it's create the jaws here and on the chin. So when we do upper and lower face, we charge 500. Well, I've just had my Botox and I can't believe how painless that was and how quick and easy it was to have. I could easily go back to work now. You, you can't see any marks, there's no bruising, there's no pain um, and I can't wait to see the results in about five days time.